This is a quick overview of a new technology called identity credentials. And it's really a discussion about how we do uh, credential transmission and issuance on the web in a quick and easy way. So before we really get into the main uh, meat of this discussion, uh, let's talk about what a credential is. Right? So a credential is basically a qualification or achievement, a quality or piece of information about your background, such as a name or a government ID, a payment provider, a home address, or a university degree. So a credential is basically a set of information that's associated with you. Um, so many, there are many different types of credentials, uh, as you know, you know, passports, shipping addresses, driver's licenses, uh, ID cards, uh, prizes that you've won. Um, and what we're trying to do is figure out a way to get all of these credentials onto the web. So before we really get into the rest of this, let's talk about uh, how we're going to associate these credentials with you. Right? So a lot of this technology that we're talking about is built on top of this concept of linked data. Uh, there are some other tutorials out there on JSON-LD and linked data signatures that you should really take a look at uh, because they cover a lot of the foundational concepts that we're going to talk about in this video. So the idea here is that if we're going to assign credentials to you, uh, we need to give you some kind of identifier on the web. And the easiest way to give you an identifier is to just assign a URL to you. By assigning a URL to you, what we enable is the ability to then assign other pieces of information to you. And we can start effectively linking credentials to your persona online. Now, just because you have one URL that's associated with you doesn't mean that's the only one that you can have. You can have many of these different types of uh, URLs. So you can have many identities online. Some of them can be pseudo-anonymous. Some of them can be almost fully anonymous. Uh, and some of them can be uh, very specific uh, to who you are uh, as an individual. So let's take a look at what one of these credentials looks like. Right? Now this looks like quite a bit of information, but we're going to go through this line by line and break it down. Uh, so this, is, this entire thing is what a credential looks like in JSON-LD format. Um, at the top here we have our JSON-LD context, and right now we're basically reusing the identity JSON-LD context. Identity and credentials are fairly closely interlinked, and so uh, the identity uh, JSON-LD context has basically everything that we need in it uh, to express a credential. The next thing that we have is the ID of the credential itself. Now the ID of the credential allows us to look up that credential at any time in the future. So for example, if we want to see if the credential is still valid or if we want to read other metadata about the credential, we can go to this URL and uh, read that information. The third uh, piece of information here is the type of credential. So there are many different types of credentials, passport credentials, driver's license credentials, email credentials, uh, shipping address credentials, uh, billing address or uh, payment provider credentials. There are many different types of credentials that can exist in the world. Uh, but the one thing that's common across all of these credentials is that they each have a set of claims. Now the set of claims uh, that's associated with the credential is basically what this credential is saying about you. So in this case what we have here is a passport credential and we have an ID here that all of these claims are associated with. So for example this is a passport credential for effectively Jane here. Here's Jane's name, Jane's birth date, Jane's government issued ID number. So all of these claims are kind of wrapped up in this credential object. We tack an expiration date onto the credential if we want it to expire at some point, and then we do a digital signature on the credential. The digital signature lets the receiver of the credential understand that it's not just Jane making these statements about herself, it's actually a government of some kind making the claims about uh, Jane. So overall, this is basically what a credential looks like. Now what the claims 
in the credential allow us to do is they allow us to state things about other things out there on the internet and in the real world. Right? It allows organizations to make claims about people, it allows people to make claims about organizations, it allows organizations to make claims about animals. All kinds of different claims can be made uh, in this huge web of linked data that we have. And that's a really powerful concept. Let's take a look at how these credentials are issued. Right? The issuing process is fairly simple. It follows what we do in the real world pretty closely. So let's say that you have this person here. And the person goes to an organization of some kind that's trusted. So let's say the organization is a university or a business, a large multinational corporation. And that organization, what they're going to do is they're going to do a bunch of checks on this person. They're going to check to see that they have a particular skill set. They're going to give them a test. They're going to do a biometric scan on their, uh, on their hands. They're going to see that they're going to verify that this person is actually who they say they are and they have the skill set that they say they do. Now, once the organization has verified that, the next step in the process is to issue a credential. Now, this credential is going to be a very specific type of credential. It's going to be a linked data credential. It's going to have a linked data signature on it. And it's going to have a bunch of data that applies to this person. At that point, what can happen is this person can then take this credential and put it directly into their credential vault. Some people call this an identity provider. Uh, you can call it a credential vault. But the idea here is that it's long-term storage for this person's credentials. Now, let's talk about the ideal use of those credentials that they've just received. Right? Uh, and let's take a, a look at a use case that's basically booking an airline ticket. Typically, if you're flying out of the country, you have, to issue, you have to provide your passport information when you go and book a flight. And it's kind of a tedious process because you have to go and find your passport, open it up, type all the numbers in, put your name and a whole bunch of other details into the website uh, of, the, of the agency that you're booking a ticket through. Right? When ideally what you'd want to be able to do is just click provide passport and have a digital passport sent over. Right? You want it to be a one-click process, and today it just isn't. So let's see how we achieve this ideal experience with this identity credentials technology. Now, if you remember, we've got our passport locked away in our identity uh, vault, our credential vault. So the first step that we do here is that we, using a web browser, go to the airline site. And we say that we want to buy a ticket. Uh, to a country that's, that's outside of our country. The first thing this website is going to do is, uh, of course, ask us for some basic travel information, but when we're ready to book the flight, it's going to ask us for our passport credential. That's going to come back to us. We're going to uh, uh, process it through our web browser, and, and our web browser is going to go into our identity vault, our credential vault, and fetch the credential and send it back to the website. Now, on the way back, our browser is going to add another digital signature to that credential. There are actually going to be two digital signatures on that credential. The first one is from the organization that issued the credential. The second one is from us, where we're basically saying we're authorizing the use of that credential for the next five minutes or ten minutes, however long this website needs, to make sure that the credential is valid. So we take that credential and then we send it back to the website. The website checks the digital signatures on it from both the issuer and from us. If both signatures um, pan out, then it knows that that information is valid, that the information that it received is, is valid, and it goes ahead and books the, uh, the airline flight for us. So the credential flow is fairly simple. You go to the website, it asks us for the credential, and then we send the credential back to... Uh, the website. Now there's an important piece of information in here. If you'll notice that we're always in between our identity provider or the credential vault and the website that's consuming the credential. And it's very important that we keep that separation because we don't want our identity provider or the identity provider service that we're using to be able to track where we're going online. We don't want them to know that we're leaving the country or uh, going to a particular location or any of that stuff. This is a privacy issue, right? We don't want this side seeing this side.
So what we do here is we make sure that whenever a credential is requested, it always goes through a agent of some kind. In this case, it's the web browser. Right? That makes sure that this whole process is privacy aware. Now, if we think about transmitting credentials, and we think about the way that we log into websites today, they're kind of the same thing, right? We show up to a website, and what we'd like to be able to do is just do a one-click login, right? Because really all that website wants from us is a verified email address. If you sign up to any website today, all they're trying to do is they're trying to find out whether or not you have an email address that they can use to contact you on, right? But if we were able to give them a digitally verified proof that we have a valid email address, let's say from a large technology provider or a large email provider, then all we'd have to do is click provide email credential and the credential would be transmitted to the website and they would give us access. We wouldn't have to go through the tedious username, password selection, verifying email process that we have to today. So the same exact process that's used for exchanging credentials online could also be used to exchange email credentials online. Right? And that's pretty exciting because it means that we would be able to use uh, the same process for transmitting credentials as we would for login on the web. And that basically means that we can get rid of username and passwords on the web. That's a, that's a really good thing because today the use of username and passwords on the web is a pretty dismal uh, affair. Right? So the future is us basically browsing the web going to various different credential vaults or identity providers that we have and transmitting those credentials so that we can access certain websites, uh, be it a medical website or a travel website or uh, a website that's specific to our job. Uh, we want to be able to transmit uh, very specific high stakes credentials so that we can log into those websites more easily. Now if you found any of the information in this video uh, uh, of interest, you can go to the opencreds.org website. That's where a lot of this technology is being worked on. Uh, we have weekly calls that you're uh, more than welcome to join. Uh, this entire uh, presentation is shared under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license. That means that you can share it with your friends and colleagues uh, whenever you'd like to. This video was made possible by contributions from Educational Testing Service, Accredit Trust, and Digital Bazaar. The video is copyright 2015 by Educational Testing Service and is provided under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Like 4.0 license. This means that you are free to share and modify the content in this video as long as Educational Testing Service is attributed and the same license is used for any derivative works.